the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Hello and welcome to show 31, part two uh, of Grey Hat Beard, the modern workplace podcast, where we talk about all things modern workplace, mostly around Microsoft 365. In part one, if you haven't listened, do go back and we, we released last week and talked about all the news that was out then. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about the power of data. And um, we're joined today by Laura Graham Brown. Would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Good evening. I'm Laura GB. Graham Brown's way too long. Um, <laughs> I'm a business apps MVP, but I don't do much of the other power, power platform stuff. I do mostly Power BI and data there. Um, things Thanks. with data. And if you haven't seen this, a, a huge amount that Laura's been doing about paginated reports, which is fantastic. And uh, I keep digging a little bit into and going, yeah, I need to do more Power BI before I get some of this stuff. And uh, I, I have been playing around with Power BI recently and it has uh, woken me up to a few different things you can do. So uh, really, really good stuff out there. Um, today, we're going to talk about the power of data and we, we're going to talk about three, three ish different topics, but we'll, we'll go through those as we uh, kick through them, because we're going to start off by saying, actually, all that matters is getting your data. You've maybe got your SSIS, your data flows, getting it all into a nice tabular format, making sure it's indexed nicely in your SQL. You see how I do listen occasionally. I was going to say, um, you are listening. <laughs> And you, you maybe created your views, you might have a few store procedures, and then you are good to go. You can crack on and just use Excel. That's that's right, isn't it, Laura? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, it depends how big your data is. If you've got a kind of like couple of thousand rows of data, fine. Excel. I love it to bits. Great tool. Go above 100,000 rows of data. Oh boy, you better have a big PC. Because, you know, say like some track and trace records, that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. But Excel runs the world, right? What is it that, uh, you know, uh, but you could just run SQL queries. What is it that uh, with things like Power BI that actually give you useful stuff? Why Why do you need that extra thing? Yeah, you can, you can run the, the, the SQL great, um, incredibly powerful. It's it's. I totally agree that you should have the views and the, and the, and the stored procedures, et cetera, et cetera. But a big page full of data doesn't tell you anything. Or it might tell a few people something, but it doesn't tell you the quick. So how many instances did we have yesterday? How many people um, had their vaccination yesterday? How many cars went down that road yesterday? How many sales, et cetera, et cetera? You need that information. You haven't got time in a meeting to go through all the details. You want something that's there and, tell, and tells you the message. And if somebody gave it to me, really simple, Power BI report should tell me what I need to know and tell me what I need to do. And I like that. I like that a lot. And if it doesn't do that, it's failed. But a big sheet of data doesn't do that. I can see you getting upset about that. It's a bit like <laughs> the matrix though, isn't it? You know, some people can look at data and see the patterns, the structure, they can see information. Most of us are blessed not to see the world that way. And therefore we need to see something a little more familiar, a little more tangible. And in most cases, when you're looking at data, there's too much of it to look at in one go anyway. So actually, you know, a big part of what you want to do is to be aggregating things, summarizing things, putting nice presentations of graphs and charts yep. and actually presenting it in a way that, you know, let's face it, most people, they just want to ask a question of data and they want to get an answer. Um, I always remember, you know, the people who used to say, well, can you just print that out every day? That report with, you know, reams and <laughs> reams, you know, the, the old paper that just used to fold over yep. and you stick it on their desk. Yeah. And you just think, well, actually, yeah, how are they going to scroll through all of that and actually decipher it? And that's really what, you know, that's where BI has been, you know, making massive inroads for the last 20 years to say, I can present yeah. this information in a more accessible way, in a way that actually people can understand. Although I don't use pie charts all the time, a bit of a waste of ink. Yeah, don't use pie charts. But, you know, I think that, and, and also with the ability to drill into that data, to get down, you know, you don't have to hide things by doing this, which a lot of people 
sometimes worry about you can still get into that you know you can li quite literally use the drill through to see the underlying data should yeah. you really really have to as well and i think that's that's yeah, in most cases in most cases you you want to do that you want to yeah. be able to say actually that information is answering one question but opening up three other questions and now i want to be able to answer those questions ideally without having to go to a different report or a different set of data and just be able to to drill through or you know decomposition tree has always been my favorite since <laughs> since performance point days way back in the day but you know it's that ability to answer questions which most and people it, want to do and it's the ability to answer that question that pertains to me so that you can take mm. the one report and that's what that's that's with for, for when i'm trying to show people the benefits of power bi the point at which their eyes light up is when I turn around and go, oh, yeah, we, when we, we can sort that report so that when you open it, it just shows you your data. And when, when they That's open really it, nice, they just see yeah. their data. Um, or even just look, you can pick those drop those drop downs at the top and filter it really, really, really quickly. And as soon as people realise they can personalise it, and whether that is a paginated report or a Power BI report, doesn't matter. As soon as they realise they can get their version of the story, um, that opens up a huge. That, that, that's where I get the selling point. That's when people get the idea, and that's and that's all of the the visualizations tools out there. So um, Power BI is the one I know, but there are plenty of others out there as well. And I think yeah, that personalizes, as you say, those filters as well. That you can give a very large one that people can cut to the areas that they want to, whether it's personalized to them based on who they are or they can then actively choose the different areas they want to look at as well yeah. they can i know slice and dice seems to have cut out of fashion slightly as a, a phrase to use but i always love it it's be able to cut into that data in the way that you want it but in an easy understandable way that you don't have to learn <clears throat> complicated SQL with common table expressions and nasty joins and all, all sorts of fun stuff like that. You can just use a click. You can easily have one, one of my favorite ways of seeing Power BI is on one of the large surface hubs and seeing people sort of press the data and see it visualized with graphs oh, yeah. and things like that. And, you know, doing the whole, um, oh, what's the Tom Cruise my, film? Sony, minority, minority Reports report. style with that. And, you know, you. I, I do often feel like Tom Cruise, but especially in front of a, a surface <laughs> hub. Yeah, so. I I, I, it, the know. resemblance is uncanny. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and it's the and it's the the um it's it's not only and then of course you get the person that gets worried about it all. So they turn around and go, well, okay, they can slice and dice, but then now they can slice and dice and they can see my team. I don't want mm. them to see my team. I don't want them to see my sales results. And so that's where that's where you bring in the governance and you bring in the row level security, which isn't complicated. Um, and, and it can be a self-service thing that's built. Um, and it's, it's bringing in those kind of things. And they've, they've recently brought in um, security tags a lot more, et cetera, et cetera. So that actually it's it's getting there so that people feel secure with exposing that data. Um, so for those who are a little bit out of touch, uh, what are security tags? And I might hold myself to that one. Um, I'm gonna. I'm so they they can do a, they can do a number of things. So they've brought in just recently um, object level security, so that that you can you can work out um, so that if somebody shouldn't be able to see a table, they won't see it at all. Um, so right. so that you can actually you can reduce it. So the row level security that's been around for a while has been mm -hmm. able to limit data down, so that you could turn around and say. Um, Gary's looking after um, the Germany account, so therefore Gary is a member of the Germany group, so therefore he can only see the Germany data. Um, and Al is a member of France. Me and you, Kevin, we'll stay to the UK. Um, we'll send Al to France. Um, and he can off, off the French accounts. Um, <laughs> um, but it's and so, so that that's all, that's been around for quite a long time, and it and it's it's, it's not difficult to use. Um, and then the recent they brought in the object level security um and it's not a premium one they, they it's for pro users as well so that's quite cool uh now the l word uh we we will talk a little about licensing <laughs> later but we'll, we'll hold off a little bit before you all uh everyone gets excited <laughs> but uh yeah but, yeah, but okay it's it's there for it's there for the for the normal user of power yeah surely 
<laughs> so I think that, that that's where Power BI fits into this. It's not just about the data. It's a, it's about being able to visualize that, as you say, t uh, answering questions with the data. And I, I think the the next step, and I always remember uh, Tableau uh, being one of the first ones, is actually want to tell a story with data. It's not just answering one question or being able to show some stuff there. It's, well, in this scenario, it's this, but then if we talk about this, it's this will happen, or if this happens, then we go down this route. And I, I think Power BI is very good at, at telling stories as well, to be able to explain data through a process. And I mean, Al, we've been working on this fund migration. It's telling that story of here's where the source is, here's where things are happening during it, seeing the uh the, the kind of performance the amount of data that's transferring of it transfers and the kind of final story which is as of this point of time this is how little or how much has been migrated and you can see it update and see the stories of any issues as you go along do you love a good donut chart with a, a green and a red it is very mm -hmm. clear um what you want is everything green and if you've got some red in there there's probably something wrong D doing something as simple as that and making it very simple and clear to people uh in the way that just a table doesn't and you can almost go through those tabs to but kind of yeah. go through those different elements as well yeah and i think you know the story the narrative that you're trying to to present really depends on the situation you know i think we've probably mm. all been into those data centers where you kind of go oh and here's how efficiently everything's running or you know where data you got monitoring and you're trying to see you know is everything in that happy place or it's well, why are my sales not working? You know, it, and there are different styles of story that you can tell with with information. And I think, you know, as Laura said earlier, it's it's about asking a question, but it's also about saying, well, what is the answer, and what should I do about it? And I think that's that's where Power BI offers things that we haven't been able to do in the past, like you know, embedding Canvas apps in, actually making mm -hmm. sure that we can take action directly from the data. So where we're looking at that, we're seeing the information, we're asking the question, we're getting an answer and we can take an action directly. And I think that's that's incredibly important to make that process as, as quick and as easy as possible. And I think it's good that someone told me the phrase actionable insights. And I, I think that apply, applies so much to Power BI, especially, as you say, with that ability to build apps into there everyone loves, you know, let, let's have this big PowerPoint that tells you a load of numbers that uh, Al, we were talking about printing stuff off all the time. Who have you been like talking to? <laughs> <laughs> no one internally, just in case anyone from CPS is listening and not mentioning anyone names there. <clears throat> but, um, you know, there, there's got to be a point. And well, if we, if we look at internal reports, we, we do love a good compliance report. The point of there is to show that uh, Gary and I are, are top of the uh, naughty list this week. <laughs> and that you need to go and sort out those timesheets, those uh, daily updates and things like that. It's that actual insight says, no, hang on, you're, you're, here's all the things that you haven't done. You need to go and sort these out. And it'd be nice to have a little app in there to be able to do it. But maybe one maybe one day we'll get the time to build that out a bit as well. But it's it's that it's seeing that data that is there for a reason because you need to do something. But if you're talking about sales figures here, yeah, yeah, look, all these good stuff that have come from uh, the last quarter, if all these numbers are very high. Yeah, yeah, everyone's great. But actually, what you want to be able to see is, is sort of trends. Can you see the trends? Can you see if things may be high, but they're starting to tail off? What are you going to do about it? Giving you the information to do something with that, I think, is uh, a really, well, it's a really important part of the story and part of the flow of that data to do something with it. I mean, I, I always look at kind of dashboards and things in the same way as I, I look at like Kanban boards, right? It's like, use Kanban all the time. Why do I do that? To make things visible, to make it easier for other people to co consume that information that might, uh, they don't need to dive necessarily in the detail, but I can show them the story of like the progress of the work that that we've been doing with that, that visual nature, because it's easier for you to understand and to, to get up to speed quicker with something that's visual rather than just seeing reams of text um, and, you know, uh, like a, a body in task list kind of thing you know using power bi dashboards it's a similar similar thing right it's it's exposing things making things visual whether that is good or that is bad so that you can make an action um as well and you know, like you say it's all about decisions because if you're not making decisions why are you capturing the data 
I would be <laughs> arguing. Yeah. 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 It's there for a reason, it is, right? It, it is easy to do. It is easy to capture data for the sake yeah. of it and throw it up to yeah. you. It, the, the number of times you hear, oh, I've spent hours on this report and I email it around to everyone every week and they don't look at it. And you're like, well, what's, what are you expecting from people? Well, I want them to look at it. And what are they going to do when they look at it? Well, they look at it. It's wonderfulness. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've had many an argument with people complaining about them, people not looking at their reports. It's like, well, you need to get an action out of it. I can't promise everyone's actually going to do the actions off the top of it. Uh, but at least there you've made it clear to people, here is an, an update and here's what I want you to do from it. It's yeah. really it's really important, though, to make sure that there is action out of the back. And I think, Gary, your example of using the campaign board, you know, you're using that if it's being used properly, you're using that as the, the single point where everybody goes and go, right, we can all see the same picture. We've got the same view of the world. We understand a common understanding of the, the world. We know what we all need to do. Data can be captured in many, many different ways. You know, I love salespeople but they're not always great at updating CRM. And, but CRM's great if you've got the right data and you get the information. And I think that's, you know, that's one of the key things, you know, the time spent aggregating data, pulling it all together and putting it into something that people can then say, well, we've all got the same view of the world. Power BI does that really effectively. And for one key reason that previous tools haven't done, which is it can pull it from a thousand different yep sources and you can aggregate it all without having to go through that massive ETL process of I've got to get everything into an on-prem SQL database. It makes that plumbing much easier. And that's one of the key things that I think has been a real success for Power BI is it, it has made it much easier to actually aggregate multiple data sources, which previously people would have gone, yeah, I'm not going to try and actually put all of that together into a single database and update it, which I think is you know, it makes it much easier to tell those stories when you can bring all those systems together. And it also puts puts it into a place that actually goes with the rest of Office. So if you've yeah. already got if you've already got access into Office.com, there's a good chance you've got access to Power BI. To get access to Power BI isn't that much more of a step. Um, so it actually it is. I mean. Excel's had Power Query for quite a long time. So actually the ETL tools have been there for a while. Um, I'm really glad you all nodded because there's, there's so many people that give me that look of it has. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Power Query, I remember being shown Power Query and just being like, my mind was just blown because I was going from a situation of, right, I need to get in and write some formulas and, and do all that with data. And it's not really repeatable to go, hang on a second, I can do step-by-step -step actions, I can roll yep. back, I can, you know, really get get my data cleaned up in, in a query and then use that cleaned up query and, and then just keep refreshing it was just like, wow, this is going to really take off and then to see where it's gone now is, yeah, incredible. And it's, it's I, I got rid of lots and lots of VBA code that was really unsupportable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and hard work. I mean, I, I half my career has so, been. Has sorry, been, you you said VBA code and unsupportable. You you didn't need that last bit. It's uh, it, it's kind of assumed there. I'm sure there's some out there that is supported, but <laughs> anyway, um, the Power Query is so much shorter. I mean, just the really simple being able to unpivot data in yeah. in one line, um, and that just make and I know the amount of VBA code that takes. And it just it just hard work. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it, it makes a huge it makes a huge difference to be able to put that put that report in one place. Um, and but the number of people that you produce that beautiful report and then they then they turn around and go and can I print it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Question is, why do you want to print it? It's going to change. It's live data. But. But I mean, I did. I did have arguments. There were teams I, I, I did produce the the things they needed to pr print it because they would do a snapshot. That's what that was there. So they didn't actually print it. They made it a PDF. Yeah. And going back to your your idea of the the long list of tasks, one of I did a two year project of taking project data and putting it into Power BI and giving them the the project on a page. Um, that changed. 
that that changed the whole reporting thing for that PMO team mm. to being a, a thing they dreaded every quarter to being something that could be done monthly. That's that's all, as Gary said, it's it's something that could be repeated. You just press the refresh button. Yeah, that's always the key thing, isn't it? How much time do they spend every quarter, every year? Yep. It's always those reporting cycles where they go, well, actually, yeah, we spent three days a month trying to aggregate this and another three days a quarter. And then at the end of the year, we spend a month just aggregating every every piece of information. Yep. Whereas if you've got it, it should be much easier than that, shouldn't it? it and you've got to think as well that if it's a repeatable process, it's going to be more accurate um, as well than, you know, people copying and pasting through Excel spreadsheets and trying to get it into one that place. decimal point. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine the amount of effort that people uh, are still going through, probably but they're not using oh. these services that that you know can it can be automated so much so that you know you start to look at the data and make decisions from that data rather than trying to massage it and get it into the right format um that's where your effort and, goes right and and the, the the awful situation of people where they turn around they, they've done the the 12 hours or whatever it is to produce that report and then somebody does an update so mm -hmm. well can we, can we just change that oh we're back to the salespeople again aren't we just before the meeting <laughs> I, yeah that's the one that's the one well, I, I remember I used to work in Singapore for a, a large bank and one of the things we used to do is every single team had to print out on a monthly basis for every single project. I think there was eight or nine sheets from an Excel sheet that you had to print out and each team had to put theirs on so that they could be visualised and they could look around the room. The amount of paper, the amount of effort, I would say all the PMs would spend most of Monday doing those reports and, and exactly something would change last minute and they'd have to print all those ones out again and uh, yeah the arguments we had about whether that was the right thing and and to be fair I, the ability to go into a room and see everything in one place and you you could see trends from that was very nice we argued that actually you could replicate some of that you could see those those patterns and things like that and could create a report which would summarize those patterns especially if you move that data out of excel and into a, a database uh, that was many an argument um, that went through on there but uh tell me excel's not a database come on oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not it, it's probably I, I did just moving to sharepoint but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well it was baby steps baby steps at the time but, and, and, uh, and your, your thing there of, of producing a report and doing it however often you were doing it. Well, I worked on a project which they were producing like only about nine charts, um, but being done for every production line every morning. Because that's what they did. Some of those were only done once a week, but every morning there was probably about three or four hours work being done in total if you added everybody together every day on every production line. Well, the site that I was on had 12. Of those meetings happening every day. I mean, being able, just being able to put some of those into Power BI just made a humongous difference because half of them were reporting the same report but for their area. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? The aggregation of data has always been the first step. And I think, you know, where we talk about Power BI, a lot of what we would get from Power BI is that we're not separating out the what used to be an ETL process, a storage process, and a presentation process, we're actually be able to aggregate it all into one tool. Yes, it's got different bits and pieces in it. You know, it's got Power Query in it, and it's got the presentation. You can put all sorts of fancy languages in it, like what DAX and MDX and R. But essentially, it's all in one tool, and you can do that whole end-to-end -end aggregation from multiple sources through to presentation without having to do that heavy lifting and importantly without having to go can I have permissions to use that database please so it's I think that's one of the, the key benefits that it has I mean aggregating data we've been doing it for well decades centuries millennia even and, um, and, there, and there are people who are good at good at parts of it and 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 not good at parts of it so the the whole aggregating and the modeling and the things like that yeah, yeah there are lots of us that are that are quite happy to do that and but they, you can then have that 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 data set gets produced 
and then the wonderful UX UI people who can produce these reports that give the message correctly in the right way, accessible and all those things that you're meant to do. Um, and do it beautifully. Well, they, they can just connect to the data set you've just made. Mm. So that actually you can, although one tool can do it all, you can split the work. So that the people who are good at the ETL, the people who are, who are good at the, the modeling and the DAX and and the the MDX, that's showing your age, Al, I think. Yeah, I know. Um, I, know. I can throw but, some more out there if you want. <laughs> I think I, I, I really like that point about it, that that multiple people can work on it. You know, it's it's not it's not power apps. Uh, you can have more than one person working at once. Um, it's so moving moving on a little bit. Uh, I, I think hopefully a lot of people know a bit about uh, Power BI and uh, her things there. Uh, Laura, you, you put some lovely links into the the show notes on kind of what is what is exciting about Power BI now. I think we, we've talked about a lot of things you can do generally with there, but what what's what's coming and what's hit recently? Well, I, I'm going to mention that evil word licensing, um, and it's good news. It's good news. Um, Premium has always been the expensive, the very expensive um, for the big boys. I mean, it's for companies with over a thousand pound BI users, and that girls. kind of stuff. Um, and so premium per user came out um, and the price of $20 a month. Um, and it doesn't have to be for everybody. Um, yep, there we go. Chris, Chris, Chris Finland, um, smiling very happy because he is really happy with this one. Um, and it's come up with 20 users per, per user per month. But actually, that's just to give them the premium premium things that they need. And it's not a thing that everybody needs. So that gives you access to paginated reports. It brings in as, as print there, your deployment pipelines, um, machine learning, all sorts of lovely things and the large data model, of course. Um, but that that makes it really, really useful. Um, deployment pipelines is an excitable one, is exciting one because you can have the the, the kind of the non-production, they can all be premium per user, and then you can have your final production, it's just a normal workspace. So your final report, That's everybody can see, can be accessible by everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody with a pro license, but let's not go too far into licensing. <laughs> it's interesting that looking at the pro and the premium, the, the biggest difference is you get the dedicated capacity for being premium, which gives you then the yeah. extra features because you've you've got that dedicated, um, I guess, compute for your data rather than using the shared kind of compute that yeah. you would use with pro. Um, and I think that's always been a bit of a change. Because like you get Power BI free, which you can't really do much with. Then you get Pro, then you get Premium, and I think a lot of people kind of get confused. Well, what's the difference between Pro and P Premium? I think that's probably a, a way to yeah. look at it. Yeah, the capacity the capacity does make a, a a big difference, and there will be there will be users who even in clients, even even in places to have um, Microsoft customers who've got Premium, there will still be people within that organization who get who who decide to go and get Premium per user. Because then it doesn't use anybody else's capacity. It uses it, they don't get limited. They won't get the the capacity failures. Um, ah, so so if you had one of the lower tier premiums, but then you want your own one for a specific yeah. use case, that would be outside of that. That's quite an interesting. Yeah, because the yeah. the premium because premium has always been at the enterprise level, right? It's yes. it's been a yeah. you know once you've got pre premium, everyone's in kind of thing but it's like uh, yeah, capacities like, get assigned to workspaces yeah but everybody's there but then it's interesting that then it's like you're able to pick at bits and, and give more specific uh i guess resources to different yeah. departments and be a bit more clever with that uh that capacity um yeah because yeah and it also makes it a hell of a lot more accessible because premium has always been a huge investment uh, no matter yeah. which you uh, which way you look at it yeah and it's it's fascinating of how many people have now become interested in paginated reports um as a, i thought that as, was just because you'd been promoting them so much <laughs> yeah ne next christmas can someone tell me not to do a 12 days please okay <laughs> <laughs> um 
Um, I've, I've still got to finish off my Advent series that I started a few years ago and got up to about 19 and went, <laughs> no, I can't do anymore. I've lost it. <laughs> yeah, I only did 12. I thought that was enough. <laughs> it's um, a, yeah. but, there. But no, it's 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 fascinating how many people have that the use of paginated reports has gone up hugely because people have seen this as a possibility to solve some problems, um, to solve some some challenges and things that are there. And so that's so that's got so that's gone up. Um, Just for any of our listeners who don't, you know, we've talked about Power BI and paginated reports relatively quickly. What's what are paginated reports? Um, pag- so so it. <laughs> Paginated reports are reports that are designed to fit on a page, a printed page. OK, so they're, they're, another name that gets given to them is pixel perfect. So they're not trying to fit on a screen. They're trying to fit on a page and you can put in, I want this to happen at this distance, et cetera, et cetera. And you can lay out the page exactly. Um, so they're being so they're So the examples that get given out are invoices, um, delivery notes, um, all those kind of reports that you want to be able to put on a page um, mm. because that's what people want. The Project One pages, it's always made me laugh. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget uh, hearings like, yeah, I want a one pager, but I want to be able to fit all my text onto it. Um, well, um, yeah. That's it not comes with a magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and your million rows as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, it's 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 so so what else? Well, so so what what else what else is there that that's um that's come out that just recently? The, the um, one I really liked that we we almost talked about last week, uh, and I'm trying to find the link to it. But you you had it on the roadmap was the um getting SharePoint lists into Power BI at the click of a button. Um, so uh, yeah. Al Gary, if you happen to have that link from last week <laughs> to you at all, I can show that because I'm. Desperately trying to trying to search for it, but can't find it. But I I thought this was a really nice way of getting getting kind of people going with Power BI who are using SharePoint already. Um, this sounded really nice actually. You know, it's it's a it's it's a nice one. It's it it brings it it brings it in easy um, to to get people from Power BI because um, SharePoint lists haven't always been the most friendly things in Power BI. That is very very true. That's very true. I mean. But I think the thing with the SharePoint lists has always been, oh, you've got to iterate through all of the different locations, all of the sites that you've got. And it's that's always been painful. Yeah. Um, and I think there's still it's there are still some limitations, but just they've improved they've easier. improved the connector. So now when you go into um connector, if you if you're in Power BI and you connect to a SharePoint list, there's the version two connector now. Which will ask you, will I, we'll go for the default view columns, if that's what you want, rather than all the columns. Um, no, really. Which oh, is we'll quite have, nice. We'll have to, we'll have to try it out, won't we? Yeah, I'm thinking now you tell. <laughs> How me. much data do we have in SharePoint? Surely not that much. Surely not that much. No, no, no. After all, it's not a database. Oh, um, of course not. <laughs> We've never had discussions about whether SharePoint is a database or not. Yeah. But I think, yeah. you know, it, it's an interesting one that okay. with SharePoint found lists, the screenshot I was looking for. They are in themselves becoming richer and easier to present information on, but it's just not relational. So it's and Power BI just gives us a bit more ability to manipulate it and and make yeah. it easier to analyze that data. You know, it's still not a database. It's still not going to have lots of relations that you, you're putting in. But if you can analyze it a little easier, if you can manipulate it a little easier, that's a good thing. Yeah, we, we, we had the example one client. They they had a load of their tasks. They, they couldn't use Planner for various reasons. Um, they had tasks in a whole load of sites and a whole load of lists, one for each team because they wanted to be able to manage those. But then they want to be able to pull those together into one place so they could kind of see it there. And Power BI made that really easy and great to visualize yeah. as well. Yeah, it, 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 it does. It does work in, in, in doing the aggregation of data. I mean, SharePoint is ridiculously slow um, to, to, to update into, Power, into um, Power BI. If you are doing lots and lots of it, please, please, please do go and look at data flows because they are quicker. Um, Talking of which. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I think you mentioned there, there was a good post on what's new in data flows. Yeah, data. So, so we've, we've talked lots about Power Query, but um, and data flows is basically Power Query online, um, and then you can save and it, and, it, and it can do the ETL set put to your Power BI report. But they, you know, remember how how in Excel it used to be that Excel desktop got the features first, and then online kind of vaguely caught up, and then there was that day that it switched over. So now Excel Online, if I remember rightly, gets functions first and then desktop gets them. Well, that's what's happened to Power Query. Power Query Online is now getting the new features before Power Query Desktop. So it's got some nice visualizations and things that have come through in the last in the last couple of months. Um, and now they've brought in and now they're bringing in some other new features from for anybody that's done data flows. You do all the you do all the ETL, you press the save button. Um, and, the, uh, if, and so in here, there's lots of things. So premium per user, we've already talked about um, the the authoring, being able to do some. Um, it's it's being able to, being able to do the refresh and and getting the um, they're switching the names to match dataverse. They're trying to keep up with everybody there. Entities becoming tables, um, and, and we all go yeah yeah yeah. Um, it's it's the the data flows fitted in with a dataverse. So that's why they were called entities and that's where so it works. That's just a naming change on that one. That's so. just a naming okay. change and it's coming through. Um and 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 then they then they show you diagrams that have lots of things in there that seem to have some old names. Um as well as the new way of showing the <laughs> diagrams. Um Microsoft and naming, they do love it. They do, they do. Um data flows have, have refresh history just the same way as, as data sets do, but slightly more accessible in um, data flows and they've got some nice things coming through about some some enhancements on there um, and they're trying to get it so that um, the workspace viewer role so you can see some more information in there um, because before all you could see was the what entities were there unless you were the owner so data flows get owned by somebody so that only the owner can edit them um, and but that's apparently going to be changing as well but now they can see the people will be able to see more information um, in there and be able to get some more space in there in is uh, the workspace roles um, made that more possible um, and the data lake stuff the there's world. some data lake stuff and some documentation they've, they've worked quite hard I think in the last year on documentation of various things um, and data flows is getting some, some new documentation which is quite nice um, and how that works um, if only they could improve the M documentation, it would be fantastic. <laughs> but hey. Good. Can I ask with, with data flows? Because I, I looked at it when it first came out, but you've got that and you've got Azure Data Factory, which is kind of the more generic. Is there, um, are there any similarities or is there any reason why you'd use one over the other at all? Um, there are similarities because I'm, I mean, but, the data lake I'm not so I, I'm not so as knowledgeable about, but if I understand rightly, it's using the same it's 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 using the same ETL techniques. It's using power, is it mm. using M Power Query, but it's yeah, expected to be larger data sets. It's the storage behind it. Yeah. So the storage of a data flow, um, unless you've attached um, different storage to it, is actually being stored in the back end in the equivalent of text. Files. So right. it's not the fastest. It's not the fastest store in the world, but you can attach um, data lake to it, so it gets stored differently. Um, and I suppose if you've got the Power BI licensing, it makes a lot more sense to use data flows there. If you're not necessarily using Power BI, then you've got the Azure Data Factory. You can sort of spin up, effectively yeah. pay for that independently, pay per yes. usage. Yes. It's probably. So it, the big difference in, in some way. I know I, it's a slightly different model, but uh. I mean the, the place in which data flows makes quite a lot of difference is um, if you've got a data set that you want to have available to lots of different reports, but you only want it only let's let's go for let's go for it's your users. It only you only do, you only add users overnight, so therefore it only needs to be refreshed once a day um, or once a week or whatever. Um, and you don't want everybody doing it. So therefore, yeah. put up a data flow. It only runs. It runs at six a.m. because hey, everybody's refreshes start at six a.m. Apparently, um, <laughs> and 
then people connect to that to get the data source that gives you your company structure. Um, things like that, the big data sources that only that everybody is going to. You don't need to give everybody that database password or a user ID, because obviously we give everybody their own user IDs in these things. So many companies don't. But the data flow gives a, a one way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just in the ways um, so that your Power BI reports can connect up easily. The easy self-service. I think that's the thing, isn't it? The, the utopian dream for 20 years has been self-service. I can find the information yep. that I want to use in my report, being able to manage, secure, control, promote data sources and go, actually, look, this is a trusted data source. This has been validated. It is under um, change control. So therefore, this is your definitive mm. list of users only ever use this. And it's got data that's not sensitive so yep. it's published to everyone. That's a key concept. Or, or, or is permissions where it needs to be. Is, yeah. 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 Or is permissioned. And I think that's that's where you know you're looking at all of the different sorts of data. Where does it come from? How do I publish it? How do I auth authenticate it? I think one of the nice things that's come through in in Power BI recently is just that more visibility of the lineage of information. Where has it come from? Where yes. is it? Is it coming from system A or system B? Because I know they've both got the same information in them, but one is more up to date than the other. You know, it gives you that. Can, can I just check? Because we talked about lineage a lot recently, and you've talked about where does it come from. Has everyone else got Cotton Eye Joe stuck in their, their head now? Is it just me? <laughs> now we have. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really glad you put that into my head. <laughs> where does it come from? Where does it go? <laughs> Must yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. We can all hear him soon now. Why did we invite him? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but I think all of these things make Power BI, you know, a, as a platform, really, really powerful to have all of this mm. capability there in one place and go, actually, look, we've got all of this. We've got the ability to publish apps. We're not just talking about reports. We're talking about publishing it, making it available to people, secured workspaces. Yep. You know, I've just set up some really sensitive data. Um, it's got tons of Power BI sat on top of it. I can use some really nice features to secure it. It's got a workspace, it's got a team, but it's all really secured and it's all surfaced in Power BI. And I can extend it, I can change it, I can augment that data with whatever I want. It's a fantastic tool for, you know, I showed showed my boss today and he kind of went, that's amazing. I have to look through all of this information now and understand the business. It's, it's that whole purpose, isn't it? I can pull it together, show this information. It's secured. People can use it. Yeah, I think once you've started, people start people start to have those questions is when things start to get exciting, right? Because oh, up yeah. until that point, people will have a expectation uh, or, or a, a feeling of, of that something's going a particular way. When you start to see the numbers and you start to look into things a little bit more detail, and you have that information, you can then start to go, well, actually, no, here's, here's what I think, but this is where the reality is. So where's, what do I need to do to, you know, to make things better? And then, you know, we're coming back to data being important and data driven decisions and companies being more data driven and products being more data driven as well is like, you know, uh, CLI, uh, Microsoft 365, we've got tons of metrics that tell us, you know, when, when CLI is being used, what's popular, um, you know, what, um, arguments being used on each command it can seem a bit like well okay why do you really need that but when it comes to making decisions about driving the product forward about do we make this change now or do we make it later you know what is the impact going to be of changing something we, we can get that understanding and go okay this changes the way that we might plan something in we might bring something forward because actually we've got an opportunity to, to do it now and there's going to be less of impact if we leave it it's going to get potentially worse um but being able to have the data help you make that decision is is really vital it's not you know 
you, you don't always just go off the numbers. There's lots of other things you have to think about that the numbers aren't telling you as well. Um, so yeah. it, again, it, it's just to enrich that decision making process that people have always been making these decisions, but it's giving you more confidence in that the decision that you're going to make is going to be the the right one if you know what i mean um and we yeah, always want to make something else and yeah, yeah experimentation it hasn't worked yeah you know the, the a b testing for the web worlds with with power bi and data like that you can do things with it can't you yeah and, and experimentation is a, a huge part of businesses now um mm. you know again back to products you know everyone's competing against each other everyone wants to innovate um as well and innovation does come with some risks and it's mm making a hypothesis and saying if we do x and y we will see an increase and you do x and y and it goes the other way and you can use that then learnings to say well why did we think it was going to go up and why did it actually go down what can we take from that um, and then you've learned something that then you can take forward into your next uh, decision and the more experience you get from that then again it's all about making better decisions isn't it um you've got to practice <laughs> the one the one report that made me laugh that made a decision in in a supermarket um was they did it as to which products get the most complaints and they surveyed customers about which products make make the best impressions and in this particular supermarket and it's it's a big supermarket it was bananas and they don't make a huge amount of money on bananas but a family will change their supermarket because the bananas weren't nice. And, and that, but that's just knowing the data. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that generally because it's the first thing you see when you go in? You generally see the fruit and veg, right? <laughs> and bananas are bright yellow, or at least and they banana, should be. Bananas are bright yellow, and to tell you the truth, if, if bananas are, are, are not good, they look not good really quickly. <laughs> I was going to say, you can tell a bad banana or but, even, a, but, you know, an overripe banana that, that you yeah. want and things like that. You almost want that but, choice from them. So so this kind of this kind of brick raises a, a, a nice little uh, additional benefit that Power BI tends to have, especially with the premium side of things, which is, you know, we talk about AI a lot. We talk about machine learning a lot and we can embed that in and go, actually, we can look at our data and you know, rather than what we used to call data mining many years ago, again, showing my age, thanks. Um, <laughs> you know, we can actually do predictive predictive learning algorithms and actually work out what's going to happen and make recommendations based on that. So, you know, we're not just looking at, well, what has happened before. We're actively now looking at, can we predict what is going to happen? Yeah. Uh, and can we use really quite sophisticated algorithms to do that? And and they've brought those things those those things in to be very self service. So yeah. um, you mentioned earlier the decomposition tree, but actually the kind of the, the partner to that the 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 the, 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 the partner <laughs> to that one is the key influencers. Yeah. To actually be able to, to actually be able to work out quite quickly. Well, what's the reason for that being for that number going up? Um. I thought you earlier you were going to say we'd get free bananas with, with Power BI, and I'm going to say... Yeah, oh, <laughs> well, they are yellow. <laughs> that is true. There's some definite swag being missed out on. But it, I, I think with the AI, I know, Laura, you gave um, a, a great demo at the Christmas uh, edition of the Power, London Power Platform Group where you did analysis of the Christmas carols and was it yeah. the sentiment analytics of them and things like that, which was brilliant. But it's all built there. I was going to say very easy to do, but I didn't want to be rude. But it was, oh. you know, relatively easy to oh, to easy pull to that do. sentiment analytics out yeah. using Power BI and processing that throughput. So, uh, yeah, um, really we worked out that, that away in a manger is the most depressing Christmas carol we have, and we <laughs> teach it to small children. It's great. <laughs> exactly. But it is it is incredibly easy, and 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 I know I am I am all for it being easy. Um, I'm aware of which bits I do that aren't easy, but I, I'd much rather do all the easy stuff um, and make it that it's self-service and and give other people the opportunity to do it um, so that they can Because do it's the... those questions and answers, the important yeah. thing, not being clever with Power BI, it's asking the questions, being able to get answers out. That is the important part of yeah. all this. Yeah. 
And I think that is probably quite a nice place to wrap up. Were there, were there any other recent bits that you particularly wanted to talk about, Laura? No, I think I've, I think I've covered all the ones that, that I want to get excited about. There are lots of things coming. There are lots of things coming. And, and the, the Power BI team throughout lockdown have done more updates than, I, than they have in previous years. I mean, the number of updates we've had come through in the last in the last year has been phenomenal. And there's exciting things coming that are on the roadmap. I'm, I'm not breaking any NDAs here. They're on the roadmap. <laughs> um, and the, the last link that um, which is to the Power BI re release plan, I think is the last link I put on the, the show notes. Um, that one's an absolutely awesome, awesome Power BI report to show you what um, what things are coming up. And if you look back there, September 2020, there were more updates than there were any other month. Mm. I mean, it is it is for me, it's a bit of a standing joke. Every time I open Power BI, I have to download a new update because there's always updates coming. Install it from store. I thought I had. But you haven't, <laughs> you haven't it's not updating. That's a, oh, that okay. is a very good tip. Get, get it from the store and then get the yep. updates happening automatically. That's yep. a very good idea. Right, uninstalling and installing from store now. <laughs> I was, do you know, I was sitting looking at this thing thinking, yeah, there's quite a lot there. And then I noticed the scroll bar down the side and like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, there's more. Ah, there's a lot more. Yeah. Smart narratives. That's that's something. I could oh, do they are beautiful. Stuff. Smart narratives and text boxes. Text boxes have updated. Anyway, sorry, I'll go for another hour if you let me. So, so, so we've got to wrap up. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, we, we'll put those in the show notes uh, for those who do want to have a look, uh, go into more detail. Um, thank you, Laura. Re really helpful. It's, <laughs> I'm trying not to get distracted by that list as, uh, as well now. It's, for me, Power BI, I'll be honest, it's one of those things that I, I have a need to do and I go and do a lot in there. Love it. Really enjoy it. And then don't touch it for a long time. And every time I come back to it, there, there's something nicer and newer in there. And things feel a little bit easier in many cases. Not not always a massive difference but just the general usage becomes easier and easier with it so i think it's as well as some of those big things we've talked about it is continuously improving as a, a platform as well which mm. is great so and i as i think the big thing is make sure when you've got your data what are the questions you want to ask and what are the either answers or actions that you want to get out of it is the key thing be able to tell a story to get to that point don't just send a load of charts to people and expect them to go, ooh, that's nice. That's um, well, hopefully they will say they're nice charts, but you have a reason that people want to look at those and actions that come out of it. Otherwise, you're just wasting people's time. Um, but Laura, thank you very much. I don't think you've wasted our time at all tonight. That was really good. Uh, we will be back next week to talk about the news and uh, another topic which if I remembered I would have handy because I can't remember off the top of my head but we will uh, be out and in your news feeds. I've been listening to a few podcasts recently and I realise we very rarely talk about people subscribing and say please go and smash that subscribe button but maybe just a little plea if you've got to this point mention it to other people go and hit subscribe on YouTube if you fancy giving us a review in iTunes, we would love it. We really, really appreciate it. I don't like shouting it because I'm rubbish at marketing and I don't want to ram it down people's throat, but please do. And we do have, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes. We're very excited to say we've actually been nominated um, for an award. So the Converse, what's it, the Community Podcast uh, Award. So there were four podcasts on, uh, being nominated. I genuinely can't remember the the other three, but I will put a link and we'll, we'll mention them again next week. Um, if you like us, please go and vote because we love awards. Awards are brilliant. We've never had one before. Yeah. <laughs> I've never won had an award. One. I won the drama prize at school. It's my last trophy I think I've had anywhere. So, uh, oh no, Gary, we won the Crystal Maze thing, didn't we? Oh, we yes, we did indeed. Um, I, I have heard from some people like, oh, you're a, you're a CPS podcast. Yes, Al, Gary, and I are at CPS, but we are not a CPS podcast. We just happen to work together, um, and and we will continue to do Grey Hat Beard regardless of where we are. So we, we are very much a community and we love to get people like Laura on board as part of the community to bring and, and spread the love to everyone. So uh, on that note, before I uh, waffle on too far, thank you very much. Uh, thank you again to Laura and speak to you all next week. Bye bye. Bye.
Bye bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Grey Hat Beard Podcast. The song Drink Up My Mateys was brought to you by Black Bones under a non-commercial attribution license.